People who refuse to accept vaccines, I think the right response for them is not to force them to, but rather to insist that they be isolated. This guy Chomsky, the guy who for decades opened our eyes up to how our minds are manipulated, has shared his thoughts on what should happen to those who choose not to get vaccinated. In summary, he wants them isolated from society. This decrepit sellout previously warned us about the manufacturing of our consent. That almost every decision we make, every thought, has been made for us and planted into our heads by those who wish to sell us products and control us, all while making it feel like we reached those conclusions on our own because we're all so smart and intelligent. He woke me up to the limited political debate that's permitted the tricks of marketing agencies, and then that in turn opened up the door to me learning more about Edward Bernays. All right, now, uh, doctor, what? Uh, tell me again what the doctor is. What are we dealing with well, here? You're the father of uh, public relations. What we're dealing with really is the concept that people will believe me more if you call me doctor. Oh, I see. <laughs> He even touched on the nonsense of believing anything that is said by someone with an academic title, something I agree with strongly. The deification of science and academia is a great danger to our society in the way that it can be used to fool the population. I don't expect to align 100% with anyone, but this just seems off. Like some sort of weekend at Bernie's type joke. Chomsky has spent recent years making wildly divisive statements to appeal to a woke mob. A final grab for relevance before he's taken to the grave. He used to point out that we reach many of our conclusions below a level of rational or conscious choice, and now he comes along and stokes division that's already growing in society because of the media and politicians. This guy, who would call himself a civilised human being, is calling for a two-tier society. It happened less than 40 years ago, and it was committed by people who considered themselves civilised. Like many others right now who would call themselves civilised human beings, they have justified to themselves that tyrannical steps are now necessary, all for the wellness of society and to achieve their utopian vision. And we've seen it all before. We had this bloke, who imprisoned and killed groups deemed as unworthy for society. And another guy here, believed intellectuals, artists, monks to be dangerous, had them rounded up and killed. He said, better to kill an innocent by mistake than spare an enemy by mistake. And then this chap used struggle sessions to persecute non-conformists and to shape public opinion, executed his political rivals and dissidents. Now listen again to the childlike arguments that he makes. If people decide I am willing to be a danger to the community, but I don't have the right to run around harming people. If smallpox turns out to uh, become rampant again and some people are insisting on running around the public places where they might have smallpox, well, you've got to do something about it. Danger to society, running around harming people. Then they stretch to make a comparison to smallpox. If you take that infantile approach, you can twist any human activity to be a danger to others. The frightening thing is just how many people are thinking like him now. Dan Andrews and other leaders in Australia are doing exactly the same. We're going to move to a situation where, to protect the health system, we're going to lock out people who are not vaccinated and can be. If you're making the choice not to get vaccinated, then you're making the wrong choice. But yes, there's going to be a vaccinated uh, economy and you get to participate that, you get to participate in that if you are vaccinated threatening the unvaccinated with losing access to healthcare. These people are not leaders. A true leader would be looking to unite people in spite of all our differences. These so-called leaders are evil, creating division and legitimising the demonising of one group by another. Now I've never so much to smoked a cigarette in my entire life. I don't do drugs. I do drink, not huge amounts. I could eat better, but I do exercise. I've barely been to a doctor in my life. I've paid a fortune in taxes, and yet I've seen close up, while doing jobs in the public sector, just how those taxes are misused and wasted. Now, 
for refusing the jab and been told I'll be isolated from society and refused any future medical attention. This is very, very wrong. These aren't the words of a leader who should be uniting people. This is all about division. I'm here if you have the Pfizer vaccine. I'm here for Moderna, AstraZeneca. You've got all of these social media influencers pushing vax mandates, lockdowns and masks. The entire media, politicians, all singing off the same hymn sheet. And you buy into it, any dissenting voice is censored. One headline, why believe it? You're still eager to gulp down your super science juice. Your social media feeds give you the impression that most people agree with you on this. All feeding into your ego because you're super smart, you went to university, you got that bit of paper. Perhaps it's your consent that's been manufactured. But on the third trial, something happens. Two. 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 Uh, two. The subject denies the evidence of his own eyes and yields to group influence.